Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Johnny. In this video, I will talk about an IELTS speaking part 3. The discussion topic is a bit weird. I know, but sometimes you see this topic. Discussion topic here is garden. <clears throat> so anything that belongs to garden, parks, gardens, trees and plants included. So <clears throat> let me remind you a bit about part 3. You'll be provided with more time to talk than usual. However, this is like a discussion-based topic. In your speech, you should have to present like present many different viewpoints as well as aspect to prove them. So basically, it's like it has to be a plus and minus, and then discussions on them. I would recommend your speech for each question is about five to six answers, like five to six uh, sentences. <clears throat> Should not be too long because you want, we will eventually run out of ideas anyway. So, how to score well in part three? As usual, stay coherent. Your speech has to be clear, inherent coherent. Also, the intonation must be perfect. Okay. The length must be perfect as well, and also you have to stick to it, it's the discussion topics. You cannot just state the fact, you have to like say something, prove it, it's like that. Okay, let's start with question number one. What are the benefits, the benefits of gardens in cities? Here's my answer. In massive urban areas, Air pollution is a major problem and having gardens on rooftops or on the balconies of apartments or houses can be of tremendous help. Plants and herbs absorb harmful carbon dioxide during the daytime and give oxygen to aid human respiration. Also, it detoxifies the air by assimilating industrial chemicals such as most aldehydes and ketones. <clears throat> Besides, having the green in front of town forks teaches them how to appreciate nature and respect other beings. However, as I can see, now today less and less young people are in touch with nature and also the industrialization forces the green out of most areas, which contributes to the ever-increasing air toxicity. Luckily. We do have programs to educate people about the undeniable importance of having gardens in cities. Okay, so there are many points, viewpoints contradicting each other, contradicting each other, like that. Okay, number two. Do any of your friends visit gardens? Here's my answer. <clears throat> Unfortunately, my generation seems to be quite illiterate when it comes to the topic of gardens. However, me and my friends occasionally visit the city parks and garden for studying. We appreciate the shades that those oak and birch trees provided, especially in hot summer days. From time to time, one can get free apples from the nearby garden. Thanks to the fact that we have a very kind neighbor who would let us study there. Provided that we help her daughter with selling too, obviously. She did not approve having naughty, ungrateful kids running around the place and stealing her fruits though. Okay, question number three. Who mostly visit gardens? Younger or older people? Basically, you have to discuss this one just like a writing task. So you have to say pros and cons. You have to say, um, like, for the younger people, you have to say yes, they do, no, they don't, something like that, and all the people as well. And finally, you have to provide a sentence to end it all, like conclusion. So it's kind of like a writing task, but being like now being like vocally expressed out. Okay, so who mostly visit gardens, younger or older people? Here's my answer. <clears throat> well, it depends. One might say that older people have much more free time to tend for gardens or to visit those lusty greens. But I have seen many old folks 
who enjoy drinking and playing chess instead of planting, instead of spending time to smell the roses. For younger people, many might argue that the majority of them do not even know how to water a plant properly. But then, I've seen many passionate youngsters caring for rosemary or thyme herbs on the nearby balconies or visiting rose garden with a loved one. So generally speaking, I don't think there could be any solid assumption to this. Okay. <clears throat> and the final question, which is really weird, but sometimes you can get asked, is it acceptable to plant vegetables in the private garden around your house? Excuse me. So here's my answer. Around my house? Surely I would accept it if anybody planted vegetables in that tiny private plot of land around my house. Considering the fact that I could be the one consuming those greens as well. Having organically grown carrots, lettuce, and tomatoes, as well as potatoes, could be a great idea. My parents might not agree as they have already has a plan to put an apple tree and several rose buds on that garden. My mother would like to have a wooden bench next to the bushes so she could enjoy reading a book while smelling the roses. My father could also have the same idea, so I don't really think it would be acceptable to plant vegetables there. Okay, these are just sample answers, okay? Why these answers would score well? First of all, it follows strictly the questions. Second of all, intonations, spellings, and the pronunciation must be perfect. It's perfect, basically, or more or less perfect. Thirdly, the length is good. It's a discussion topic, so you have to have like plus and minus to basically fight with each other it's like that. And finally, you use I have to use a lot of words that is academic. So it's like part three bring out all of your guns and weapons don't hide it good luck and i hope it was helpful please like subscribe and share my videos i'll see you in my next video bye